Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net. And we've got a great video tutorial here for you today, but also we have a brand new DVD called Designer Sound Effects. And uh, if you come over to videocopilot.net, check out the product trailer, 500 movie trailer sound effects and awesome, awesome stuff. So check it out. There's also some cool tutorials, create a cool shatter effect, learn how to mix and create these cool promos that you see all the time. So go to videocopilot.net. Um, I'm sure there's banners everywhere. You can't miss it. Not to mention the new blog. Be sure to check that out. Um, okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to create sort of a time freeze effect like this. Okay, pretty cool. I will point out that these sound effects are in fact from designer sound effects. How perfect is that? Now you probably recognize him. This is Sam Loya in the uh, video here and uh, he does a great job falling down without a pad on the floor. So that was great. Also, this effect has been seen in different places, heroes, movies, shows, all that good stuff. But my earliest memory of this effect is in a show called Out of This World. And it was about this little girl who apparently was half alien or a quarter alien. I don't remember. But check it out. Her powers is the ability to freeze time for other Earthlings. Interesting. She puts her little fingers together. Damn. Love that show. I don't know why that went off the air. Um... Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing, let's take our Sam Freeze footage, drag it into a new comp. And what we have is two shots. We have shot one, walking and falling in real time. And we have shot two, examining. Now, the trick to this shot is being on a tripod. Okay. Number two, having the foreground be the thing that is falling or the, the glass of milk that's spilling. That's got to be in front of your background. The reason why we'll get into it in a second if you haven't already figured that out. Also, you want to make sure that you do not cross the plane. So he occupies this space and he would occupy the space behind him or he's walking forward, so in front of him. But the point is you want to make sure you have that sort of planned out just a little bit. So let's go ahead and cut this. Uh, we have two shots. Control Shift D splits that right in half. Now, let's find when we want to freeze this shot. So what I'm going to do is take our second shot and overlay it. And then bring the opacity down. Hit T. And we'll bring it down to 50%. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this and try to find where we want to stop time. Now, if we do it here, we're not going to see his face because the box is going to be front. We're not going to see his face. So maybe if we do it right here, we can see his face, get his reaction, and still have a really dynamic shot. So... With that in mind, we're going to right-click on the footage, choose Time, Enable, Time Remapping. It's also, if you're in 6.5, it's up here somewhere. I don't know. Um, time, Enable, Time Remapping. Then we're going to set a keyframe for that point in time. Look, it's at exactly four seconds. Easy enough. Then we're going to go to the end of the edit and put a... Little uh, keyframe there also. So now we have two keyframes. Then right after four seconds, we're gonna go one frame down, page down. We're gonna set another keyframe. So if I zoom in here, two keyframes right next to each other. Then we're gonna select the second and the last keyframe. And minus and plus on the keyboard, and we're gonna move this over. So what's gonna happen is if you look at the time here. As I scrub through, it goes in real time, it's playing one, two, three seconds, gets to four seconds, it stops. Time stands still. Then, after this keyframe, time resumes again. And because we kept these together, it'll play in real time and we don't have any frame problems. Let's just extend this clip out. And. Okay, so now what we need to do is time this animation. So let's turn on our second layer. So we'll call this second Sam. We'll call this background. And what we want is second Sam to come in just before it freezes. 
basically, you don't want him overlapping him until he is 100% frozen at this point in time. So here is okay, because by the time he gets there, he will be frozen. And it's an interesting effect having them both walking at the same time. I'm sure you can see the possibility for doing cloning and other kind of uh, effects if you do a split screen, like we'll show you shortly. So, freezes, he walks away, and again, we need to make sure he is out of behind him before the animation plays on. So, let's move to about here and then extend this freeze time. So, plays, time freezes, he's not overlapping, overlaps, he's out of the shot, real time goes back into play, we're good to go. So, let's hit N on the keyboard and trim this comp. So, we're good to go. Now the compositing part. What we need to do is hit you, we can see our keyframe, and we're going to duplicate the background, and we're going to call this the four ground. And we're going to put this on top of the stack. Then we take the pen tool, hit the tilde key, the key next to the one on the keyboard. We want to basically draw an outline around the area that should be on top, otherwise known as the two boxes and Sam. So just go in here. The good thing, we only have to do this for one frame. So take the pen tool and just start going to town. Um, this is where you can work hard or you can do it fast. It's up to you, depending on how much uh, time you want to spend. I'll just uh, run through this pretty quickly. I don't know why I always can't be fast. should be an option to only pick man colors. Sounds like a uh, feature request. Um, yeah, so just uh, go through this. Drawing the points. And also, if you want to get a round curve, just click and drag. Otherwise, just a click will create a sharp edge for the boxes. Figure that'd be good. And then we get to the person again, and we can do this. And we know that he doesn't overlap in this point, so we can just hurry and do this part. Now, another cool trick while working on masking is if you turn, let's see. If you turn the adaptive resolution off, it won't try to update, you know, by creating a, you know, low resolution image, and it'll make it easier to see the edge that you want to create. So I usually shut that off while I'm working. Now, what do we have? We have this, and we have this background. So what we want to do is, uh, well, first let's uh, let's clean this edge up a little bit. If we select the foreground, hit M, we can bring um, the mask in just a little bit. Apparently there are two masks. I must have duplicated one. I'll delete that. Um, what we can do is hit MM and we can expand the mask. Or we can contract it, so negative 0.5. And that'll maybe clean up this uh, little edge here. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't matter too much, but feel free to go in there and use the arrow keys and move those points around to clean that edge. But I'll leave that to you guys. So now we have the composite. So what we want to do is go back and find exactly when it freezes, right here, and trim this top layer to only start at that point. So we don't see it, and then it comes on. And then, again, a frame before the last keyframe, we'll trim it also. So that it's there and it's gone, and we get it when we need it. Then let's bring the opacity up for the second SAM layer. The, uh, Mystical Sam, and so far we're uh, we're getting there, kind of walking around, walking away. So now we need to bring the other background layer into this. So with our second Sam layer, we can take the mask tool, and we're just going to create. I'm going to solo the layer. We're just going to create a garbage mat around his person. So just create a big mask. Hit M. Mask shape, keyframe it, move forward, and we're just going to kind of follow him. And keep it tight, because uh, the closer we're on him, the less, uh, you know, the less we have to worry about any other things being problematic. So, follow him out. 
and follow him out of the shot. And likewise, MM, we can expand it just a little bit and then feather it out, maybe 25 pixels. That way it blends um, with the edge of the other layer. Then if we turn the background layer on, what we can see is that our character now will be shown. And just at the time when it freezes, it doesn't matter that the background now is frozen as well. So what I mean is we don't have to be so perfect with this garbage mat. But for this case, let's bring it off just a little bit so that we don't lose the hand during the live action real time part. So the point is you just want to make sure that that mask doesn't create any semi-transparent parts. And that's sort of the reason why he needs to be out from behind him while you um, animate that. Otherwise, you're going to see a jump. So anyway, um, let's see where we're at on this. I'm going to hit zero. Preview. Okay, um, wow, I didn't realize it was going to look that good with such little work. Um, this is a pretty straightforward effect. I mean, come on, they were doing it back in the 80s with Out of This World, and I'm sure some of you guys remember even longer ago. Um, again, though, you can go in and adjust the mask, bring the edges in. I mean, it's up to you. But uh, this is a pretty cool effect, and uh, I'm sure you guys can think of some really great ways to use it. Now, those sound effects are on the Designer Sound Effects Collection. You can see it's used a few of them to create sort of that reverse sound. And uh, that's just uh, one of the few uses of those great sounds. Check out the promo video and all that information, you guys. I think it's a very powerful collection, whether you're doing compositing, motion graphics, any of that stuff. So that's my pitch. Um, probably not the last one, but dang, a good one. Um, anything else I can think of for this tutorial? I mean, it's looking, pretty, it's looking pretty sharp. Remember the high shutter speed. Remember to be on a tripod and uh, sort of plan the shot out so you know what you're going to do. But other than that, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know I had a great time working on it. And uh, hey, videocopilot.net, be sure to check out the blog, leave a comment, um, make fun of me, all that good stuff. It's great. My name is Andrew Kramer, videocopilot.net. We'll see you guys next time.